It was the week before Christmas and all through the church. No, 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 I'm not actually going very far down that road. But, uh, but here we are. Wow. Christmas is coming. The geese are getting fat. We are uh, on the home stretch of Advent. And uh, it is a joy and blessing to welcome you to this time of worship. I'm Michelle Miller, um, pastor at Wesley United Methodist in Crookston and Erskine and Foston United Methodist Churches. And I'm Rob Kopp, pastor of Bemidji United Methodist Church. We're coming to you from the sanctuary of Bemidji United Methodist Church. And, uh, and so here we are on uh, this uh, last wealth of worship service for the last Sunday of Advent. It just goes so fast. And, uh, and yeah, and so we are grateful you're here. Um, we're grateful for all of the ways that uh, you participate online and uh, also uh, for your prayers, your presence online, uh, your gifts, your service, for all the ways that uh, you are living out your faith, um, both um, through this service and uh, throughout the rest of your life. 
And so with that, let us be in a spirit of worship. The presence of God is found not in abstract heavens, but here in the earth of things. In the shrill cry of life first emerging from a womb. In communities that gather round. In the land that holds us and the water that enables us. God is found in the possibilities of new life to come. Possibility for relationship. Possibility for intimacy. Possibility for seismic shifts around us. Come, let us rejoice with anticipation, open to transformation. Let us pray. God of becoming, journey with us that we may change violent systems rooted in control, heal damage done from harmful relationships, and bless the sacred complexity of all bodies. For aliveness is inherently vulnerable. Thus, compassionate care for one another is essential. Amen. from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, With all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned to her home. When you hear the words, Hail Mary, what do you think of? Perhaps for some, it would be a Roman Catholic prayer that is the base for rosary prayers. While not usually a practice for non-Catholic Christians, you may know of it from friends and or family members. This meaning is first on the list on the Wikipedia page for uh, quote unquote Hail Mary. But number two, and I think uh, this one is probably more common, Hail Mary refers to a football play, a pass play. It's a last-ditch effort to score a touchdown when time is running out by throwing the football as hard as the quarterback possibly can in the general direction of the end zone to one of the receiving players. It is seldom completed successfully with a probability, probability so low that when successful, some would say it is an act of divine intervention. 
While the play has often been associated with Catholic college football teams like the University of Notre Dame, it became more common after it was used successfully by the Dallas Cowboys in a 1975 playoff game against, guess who, the Minnesota Vikings. And yes, it was completed successfully, ending the game. It's part of what made the Cowboys so popular here in Minnesota. And yeah, I'm old enough to remember it. I don't know about you, but I generally don't think of God intervening in sporting events, no, no matter how many times you might see players praying, right? Sure, these events can be fun, and part of that fun is when we pick a team or player to follow or in, and root for. But if we believe the world is in need of God's intervention, we can probably think of causes which are more important to God than a football game. The biblical connection to Hail Mary is found in two Bible stories. It's the greeting the angel Gabriel gives to Mary, the mother of Jesus, when he announces her pregnancy. And it is the way Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, greets Mary in the story we read today. On one level, this is an intimate story of two women in a time of great joy. For Elizabeth, the joy of having a child long after she thought it possible to have one. And for Mary, a child who will be Emmanuel, God with us. The women are connected within the relative safety of being family. But they are highly suspicious women in the world in which they live. And the words that are shared here are subversive ones. What they share is, is a common Jewish history in the belief that God will bring about justice for the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed. The women believe God is full of mercy and compassion. Mary's song echoes the songs of Miriam and Hannah and Deborah, these are women of the Bible who express and carry God's promise in times of great distress among their people. And so it is also true of Mary. These songs are not sung as a last act of desperation. They have nothing in common with a football play. <laughs> They're songs of God's power God's persistence, God's promise and presence throughout the course of human history. They form a sketch of God consistent with the identity of the child that Mary carries, a child who will be the fulfillment of their hopes and dreams. It will not be an easy path for Elizabeth or for Mary. Both of their sons will die at the hands of the oppressors, with great grief and loss. There will be suffering and struggle. But they did not believe suffering and struggle would be the final word. That place is reserved for the word made flesh, the embodiment of God's hope for a broken world, then and now. And so with Mary's song especially, we have the promise which carries Jesus in his time through life, death, and resurrection, and in our time as well. We too live in a time of great distress and despair, especially for the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed. And there are times when it feels like the oppressors seem to be winning, but they will never have the final word whether it is in the Roman Empire of Jesus' time or the empires of our time. Perhaps we need Mary's song this year because we need Jesus. And as followers of the way, we carry Jesus. 
This week, as we gather for Christmas, may God bless us in celebrating his birth in our lives and in our world. And like Mary, may we carry his resurrection hope as was promised long ago. May God of justice, God of hope, and God of grace be with you. And may you bear Christ for our world, which is in need. Amen. Let us join together in singing Star Child. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. God of hope, in whom we live and move and have our being, your seed of love is planted in our hearts, in our very selves, growing a longing for justice and loving intention in your world. Open us to your possibilities. Let our whole selves recognize our connection with you, with each other, and all your creatures and creation. Let us look within to discover the movement of your spirit for our time. Draw us, related in you, into the kind of connection that changes the world. Stir in us clear-sighted and courageous recognition of the deadly oppressions of empire in our time. And discovering that we are in you and you in us, 
Let your joy abide in us and overflow in acts of love and justice that change the world. In hope we pray, as Jesus, God with us, taught us, saying, Our Father, Father Mother, Mother, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the movement of the Holy Spirit. Oh, let's try that again. In the movement of the Holy within and beyond us, we waken to our part, our call, to live out God's transformative justice in our world. Wakened and stirred to hope, opened to God with and within, let us take heart, finding our related ones and taking courage with one another. Inspired in truth and in the hope of the ages, that the God of earthly possibility chooses those who seemingly have no power, trust that you too are powerfully chosen to bear love and justice into this world. Go in peace, go in hope, go in joy, go in love. Expect the unexpected. For the God of possibility and love goes with you. Amen.